Hey guys, hope everyone's doing okay. So I just wanted to do a very quick video to walk through a general approach I like to use when texturing eyes. I've recently been working on quite an extended personal project based on old painting, and I've spent a good chunk of the time on that project refining my eye workflow. Um, quite a core cool part of my eye workflow as of recently has been painting textures within Mari non-commercial. Um, today we're just going to quickly go through my setup for the cornea and we'll probably touch very, very briefly on the iris textures as well. But that the key part of my approach is that I, I like to hand paint everything, at least as much as I can. So this setup will be using a combination of paint nodes and of uh, noises to kind of dynamically layer everything together, kind of like the way you would build a shader. I'm not projecting images and I try to keep my painting quite simple, at least where I can. Um, but yeah, so we'll go through the, the basic setup. Obviously, you've seen some renders on the screen just there of how the eye looks. And yeah, so we'll get started. So here's the Mario setup. Um, it is quite small compared to like obviously film assets. This is very small, uh, but it's got three, well, four key parts. We have a backdrop for the color. We have a backdrop for the specular color, which is only really doing one thing. And we have a backdrop for the bump. The fourth section is masks here. I do have more masks than just these two, but these masks are used across multiple channels. So I like to put those in their own backdrop just so I can kind of visibly separate them from everything else. And if a mask is only needed for one specific effect, I will just keep that with the merge node it's needed for. But yeah, so this is the output eye. We'll just very quickly walk through uh, the setup, kind of merge node by merge node, and starting with the base color. So we have a color node here called base sclera. This is set to an off-white color. Now, a general note to any look dev or texture artists, if you, or you know, people who want to do that anyway, uh, if you want to do realism, you need to avoid pure white colors. They don't really exist, at least in anything organic. So this is a very subtly off-white tinted towards yellow and that will serve as a kind of our base color for the sclera. We then move on to adding some discoloration. Now I've done this using a cloud noise and another simple flat color. And what that does is gives me this texture. Now I know this looks quite extreme, but when you stack this with all the other effects like the veins and the kind of redness at the back of the sclera, you, it kind of blends back in. Uh, but I find that this breaks up the uniformity that I find very often in quite simple uh, CGI's, including um, pretty much all of mine up until this point. Um, so yeah, that, that forms my base. We then move on to Merge Sclera Red. I didn't really know what to call this. Fundamentally, we're just adding the red kind of gradient towards the back of the eye. This is done using a flat red color and painted a very simple map that just kind of fades towards the cornea and is completely uh, white once you get to like the mid part of the sclera. So that gives us this quite flat gradient. The next stage is probably the most complex in terms of painting, although it is still quite simple, is veins shallow. Now, this mask um, is definitely not going to be what you're expecting. So there are a few kind of hand painted veins in here. So you got this squiggly one here and um, you know, some more, more identifiable shapes but there's also quite a lot of noise within this. And that's because I've used uh, one of the brush presets that comes with Mari called uh, Vascular. I believe it's in the organic uh, brush preset section. And so the actual raw mask looks like this. Now, there is a reason for that. Um, as I said, you can see there's some hand painted sections in there, but the reason for this is because eyes have like a surprising amount of bump to them. And one of the really nice things with Mari is I can use one map and plug it into multiple places. So I figured, okay, well, I want the, the bump of my vein, uh, I want the color of my veins to kind of line up with bump within the shader. So all I've done is I've created my color using this very chaotic map and with some you know much bolder hand painted veins on it. And I've also run that same um, paint node down into uh, this little multiply down here. We'll get back to this multiply in a second, but you can see how this one paint node is going to two places, and that allows me to kind of use this within my shader to drive different effects, as well as drive the color in, in Mari itself. So the final stage, this is again, quite a simple texture, is the cornea color. So 
Something I find quite often with eye references, there seems to be a very subtle fade towards grey. So the cornea is, as you know, the transparent part of the eye. This kind of section here, it tends to, just, yeah, again, fades a little bit towards grey in many instances. So having a very simple mask, which is just painted as a small gradient from the front of the eye, that allows me to drive the colour. And I can also use this mask later if I want to, to drive aspects of the shader. We then move on to spec colour, which to be honest, mine is very simplistic. I just use mine to remove spec from the inside of the eye. So this uh, cornea and sclera is modelled with a thickness for my new setup. So this is simply just removing spec from the inside UV islands, which are quite small proportionally, but I didn't really need any detail in those. And the final section is this bump section. So the reason for this multiply is because you don't really want any kind of veiny bump on the cornea, because that would really kind of mess up your vision, obviously. So this is quite a simple channel. I'm just grabbing that vascular texture from before and multiplying it with an inverted version of my cornea map, which allows me to kind of like get rid of the veins at that front section. This is then obviously run into three separate channel nodes, so I can export these individually. If I wanted to export this cornea map, I could create another channel and that would allow me to export it flattened um, to use in my shader later. Uh, but it's, it's a very flexible setup. And I think for the, the amount of nodes, you're getting quite a lot of control out of this setup. And I quite like the, the output of it. Obviously there are uh, plenty of room for improvement. Uh, if you have any recommendations, by all means, put it in the comment section because you know, we're all learning still. Uh, but yeah, that's my general setup for the sclera. The iris is a little bit of a different approach. So the iris, I originally painted within ZBrush just while I was kind of concepting um, my initial kind of eye. So I'm starting with a tiled node and that tiled node is just loading in my quite chaotic texture from ZBrush. Um, but I'm then following that just to kind of refine it a little bit. I brought that back into Mari to have a little bit more control rather than just keeping it in ZBrush and fighting against the color management in there. So the first thing we're doing is softening it out a bit because the eye, generally speaking, has quite a soft, almost cloudy top layer to the iris. So that results in a color that is kind of lacking uh, in detail. So that gets merged basically into this kind of cloud texture here. And again, that just kind of softens out, removes some details. The mask for this merge is relatively complex, but not really too bad at least compared to the previous ones. So we start with a iris top layer and that's just a very, very messily painted map to kind of add these areas where this kind of merge softens out the base texture from ZBrush. But we also have this uh, iris top layer rings. Now that's something that I spotted, at least in the reference that I was using, it had these kind of grooves where it was both indented slightly, but also um, a little bit, uh, a little bit kind of lighter as well. So to replicate that, rather than do that in multiple merges, I just decided to create a mask and merge that together. So we're getting this kind of, um, you know, increased areas. I separated that into its own map, just had a bit more control over it. Um, and that gives us this kind of soft brown look. I'm then just adding a dark spots, which is another cloud to kind of add some variation. And dark spots is just going in and again, with a very, very gentle uh, soft brush, I'm adding these little regions where the iris gets a little bit darker. And again, much like with the sclera, uh, with the vascular texture, I wanted this uh, top layer rings texture to uh, be used in my bump or displacement. So I created a separate channel, which is just ISO top layer rings, because I couldn't really think of a, a better name for it. Um, and that just goes into my shader in Arnold, in Maya, um, to just kind of cut in the displacement a little bit. And it just gets a bit more of an interesting effect through lighting. But yeah, so that's my general setup. I hope that this has been informative. Again, if there's any um, recommendations for how to improve the setup, by all means say it, because I'd love to kind of learn from you guys as well. Um, but yeah, I hope this has served as like a nice little introduction to how I like to touch my eyes. Uh, and can't wait to see what you guys do with this. All right, have a great night. Bye.